campus. We have Trevor and Joel with us from North Florida slash titular slash heritage. Yeah, slash <laughs> whatever else. Everything. Yeah. 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 Um, so we're going to start off with going over the layout of everything. Then we're going to roll into the install. Install everything. Got pizza coming later. We'll start to watch as it transitions into night. We can play around with the lights. And it should be a good day. So that's basically the layout of what we're doing. We've got a couple of tricky parts of the install today, but it should be good. We're installing like what, 17, 30, something like that? Yep, 17. So we got a bunch of lights, a bunch of extra ones too, so we can add as we see fit later on. Uh, but it should be a good day. Make sure to ask lots of questions, work with someone you haven't worked with before and have some fun, learn something. So I'm gonna pass it over to Trevor. Gonna go over the layout of everything first and please ask questions if you have them. Yep. <clears throat> All right, thanks guys. <clears throat> um, so as Josh said, I'm Trevor Rosendahl. I've been in lighting my whole professional career. Uh, I had a company here called Night Lights for a long time. Uh, just give you my background, just so you know where I'm coming from on all this. So I was self-taught, uh, learned in the field. Of course, uh, been many classes along the way throughout the uh, country. So I had night lights here and in Charlotte and in Ohio, and then also worked for a large uh, uh, lighting group called Pinnacle Lighting Group. So. Um, as Josh said, make sure you ask questions because that's really how we're going to learn today. I'm not going to sit here and just, I can't talk for five hours. All right. So just ask questions along the way. Um, if there's one thing I do know, it's, it's lighting, exterior lighting. And I've uh, been around with, with Mark in this, this uh, market now for um, uh, 18, 18 years. So uh, I go back all the way to when there were the PAR 36 halogen and everything's changed so much with the LED and you have a lot of options with that. So um, one of the things with this house and the, what we're going to talk about and you always, when you not, I know everyone won't be in front of the customer, but you always want to tailor the design to the customer's personality. So don't make it about a per fixture price. You're going to make it about their personality and what the works well for their home and their facade. That that quickly takes away from well, and everyone here. Well, what's your what is a per fixture? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Uh, what we like to do is tailor it to your home and to the exact, you know, uh, your personality. And you'll hear me say that a lot of what you want this to be. Because some people are trying to, you know, make it the brightest in the neighborhood. Some are trying to make it just like, just so they have enough light. But you have to cater, cater that design and tailor that design to that. So Jason and I, we obviously met with this homeowner. He's, he's looking for a nice, subtle, you know, appeal, all right? And so that's the approach to the front of this design and what we're doing here. Um, so when uh, Mr. Phillips, um, when we talked to him about it, he's not trying to be stand out and keep up with the Joneses or anything. He's really doing it more for a practical need because it is dark out here. And then also again, give them a nice warmth when they pull up to the drive and, and see the front of the house. <clears throat> so with that said, we'll go ahead and start talking about the, the front. And like I said, ask questions because that's the only way, and, and, and please question my design, because I'm not, it's not, I'm not, you know, perfect. I've just done a lot of them, thousands and thousands. Thousands and thousands. If you need this back, if this is your last one, you I need got it. Right. Hold that microphone like that. It'll work better. Like this. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it does work a lot better. All right, my job is done. <laughs> See you, Joel. So we're just going to talk about the general approach and the design on this house. Um, this house, it, you always have to kind of remember where the, um, when you're coming home, whether it's from a neighborhood, or, but this one has two entries, right? So you have to keep that in mind when you're on a corner. And, you know, some of this is going to be redundant for you, for you all. I understand that, but I'm going to at least kind of touch on all the basics, even if it, if, even if it is uh, monotonous. So just remember, we're on a corner. So more than likely, you know, their entry to the garage, you want to know where that is, where people are walking walking up, they're walking the dogs, walking in and out. So you just want to make sure that you're always doing that. And that the biggest thing is you want to go by this house and you want to say, hey, wow, look at that house at night, right? Look at that house, look at that palm, look how beautiful it is. Not, not look at those lights. Because you don't want to have to see the, when you, again, whether you're walking or driving by, you don't want a big light in your face. So always keep in mind of actually 
uh, any source, you're always going to try to hide that source, right? So you're not going to want that source in your face, whether you're walking up or down the street or pulling up. So you just want to have a nice, warm, warm approach uh, to every every angle that you're in. Sometimes it's impossible to get rid of the source and you're going to see it at some point, right? But you just always want to do the best you can. And you can do that with shields, louvers, and lenses, all right? <clears throat> so if you look at the front, the left, right, I always start with the house, all right? We're going to consider just the front. We're not, you know, even though there's a back here, we're just going to consider the approach to the front. So my approach is always you start with the house, okay? So you're going to start with that architectural peel and, and don't worry about the landscape. You literally like start and only focus on the architectural of the house. Now we have a tough one here. This is a challenge for this house because we don't, you know, it's a, it's a short um, soffit. Um, you know, there's, you know, not necessarily a lot of, um, uh, Big, big architectural features and such. So this is, is actually a really tough one, as probably all can notice. But what we're going to do is um, we're going to do some core drills. So left to right, you always want to think of that left to right and what that, what's that's going to make that make it glow as you walk up, but at the same time not be obtrusive. Again, a, a tough one because we have the walkway right against it. What I don't want to do is pull back and shine at the house. If if we can get away with that, you never want to you never want to do that. You always want to be up close. Depending on uh, on the trim and everything else, you always want to kind of be up close and work your way back. So from left to right, we're going to put a core drill on the far left, and I want to extend that all the way out. I know I have a downspout, not a lot we can do with that, but we still want to extend the house all the way out as far as we can, left to right. What's a core drill? Core drill, core drill is uh, what we're going to do is with the actual um, core drill, <laughs> we're going to actually um, drill, the drill the pavers out any hardscape so you can do that in concrete Josh I know you said you don't really do that but if if you're approaching an existing house like we are here you uh, anytime you can do a core drill it's a professional it's a very professional um, application and makes and can really change uh, um, applica um, a house appeal so we're gonna put those there instead of sh pulling back We'll have a sleeve and then we have these many all-purpose lights with shields that we'll put into the walkway to uplight the house. And so on the left, we're going to have a core drill. We're going to be about 12 inches off, just off to the side of the, uh, uh, the molding there. And because of that molding, um, the, the bottom window, I guess you would call that trim, um, we'd have to go too far out. And that's why we're not doing a core drill there because Mr. Phil, that'd be right in the middle of his walkway as he walks up and he didn't really want that. So we're actually pulling one back and we'll, we'll extend the shield a little bit and we'll just focus on their, um, the little artwork here. And then we'll have a um, core drill on this one right here as well. And that one will be, it's very, it's very um, important it, it, that we put the center of that core drill at the exact same spot. Shining at the house? Yep. Why, why that is? Yep. Good question. Question is uh, why put them in the walkway versus shining at the house? Uh, they use that entry all the time, and he talked about like he didn't want a bunch of lights shining across them into his face. Um, and I would have probably done that anyhow, just because I, I'd much rather uplight than shine at something. Okay. Always. It goes back to the first what you were saying originally. Yep, behind the sewer. Traffic coming down, you don't want to have light shining at the car. You kind of want to have it hidden. I, I understand. What you're yeah, just the source itself. So again, think, always have that in your mind. Like, may, I drive by and like, wow, look at that house. Uh, again, at night I'm coming home and like that house is beautiful. Not, whoa, look at those lights. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Are you going to use the same light fixture on the art piece as you will at the papers? Light angles. I'm sorry, the degrees. Are they be roughly the same degree? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so they'll get to see what a light looks like going across the That's right. Way, and you'll get to see a light coming up on the home. To see what he's talking about, that difference, the art of the light coming straight up on the home is the throwing it at the house. And that is a really big deal on stone and on brick. Um, we have artwork here. Again, this is, a, like I said, this is kind of a difficult one because well, the, the way that this, the challenge of the, the height and the, the, the walkway up against the house, but, and the extended soffit. Because we have a usually your soffit's not this extended, so so left to right, finishing it off. Now, one thing I was going to talk to you about, Josh, is and Joel uh, made a good point. We're gonna 
that we have this outlet cover. Sometimes you just can't, you know, it can't be perfect, right? I don't really want a light right there, but I don't have a lot of choice. If we come across, then we're shining at the door, which is right in the guy's face. So we're gonna keep that one a core drill. I think we're gonna go ahead, even though this down, I don't have one here, and I'll talk to you about that, Josh, and we maybe, we, you know, have a you know, meeting about one light, but I didn't put one there originally because because of that downspout, but maybe we do put one on the other side of this, this door here. And then we're gonna finish it off with one in the middle here, and then on the end, and that's very important uh, to always take it as far as to the left you can, or yeah, far as left you can, as far as the right you can. Always extend the property as much as you as you can. Um, these, that, those two, that's the Sago, Okay, so these two red ones are just up on the Sago, not that tree that's not there. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish it off with that Sago too, and that's my fault, that should have been on there. So we'll have, anytime you have landscape like this, you don't wanna light every little thing, but it makes sense, and just think of that in your head, in groupings, you're not gonna do that Sago and not do that one. Okay, so symmetrical, right? <clears throat> So when I designed this and I, when I, huh? Balance. Balance, yep. Yep, for sure. Question. Yes. Uh, based off this design, what are the path lights gonna be highlighting? In mean, which direction will they be? We, he does have, annual, you guys do annuals. They're pretty, not right now, but we're gonna have them here at the entry to kind of designate that front entry walkway into the doorway because we're not gonna get a lot of light back from this design. I don't. If I don't have to put a path light in, I don't. It's really only if, because it is dark out here, I've been out here at dark. So we're gonna get some ambient light back from the soffit, which will look really good because it is a white soffit. But just from my experience, this being this far out, you won't really get enough unless he turns on the coach light, which we'll talk to him about with the yellow bow. Remember, bolt. a path light's not a directional, right? So you're not aiming it. It's gonna be 360, right? So you're gonna have a good, two thirds of that in the garden bed, and then another maybe a third or so on the cement. So you just put, and you don't need to put them like army men side by side. A lot of times you're gonna have them all set, right? So you need a little bit of light here and then a little bit of light here, which just gives you a path welcoming your guest up that pathway. Does that make sense? Yep, thank you. Thanks Joel. Yeah, chime in whenever Joel, please. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about downlighting today too. We're not going to actually do it, but we're going to mock it up. There's a huge opportunity in this market for downlighting. And that's, that's usually not done correctly, but also it's not done because it's just cutting corners. Everyone knows the security lights, right? You see them, floodlights, they're everywhere. Actually, except here. <laughs> but think about every time you have those there's an opportunity to replace those a couple different ways and we'll talk about it when we do the mock-up over here we're not going to actually install them but we're going to show the mock-up those floodlights take away from it right would everyone agree with the takes away from the design well what if you if you interchange and those floodlights are just as important as any other light you put a shielded fixture there and now you have now you add to the property versus taking away from the design so anytime there's a floodlight there's an opportunity for a sale there so just just uh, something i learned from a, a really seasoned person in ohio eight years ago and i was like oh man beautiful because then there's opportunity for again this is we're, we're doing lighting 101 today but then there's an opportunity for automation making those those floodlights work with the transformer on a wireless there's there's a lot of different ap applications you can do there and you can use a 120 volt by kitchler but you also can use a 12 volt and put like a little mean well driver if there's room in that soffit so there's step down drivers for all these all these as well again we won't get in too much detail but down lighting can be done very well uh, it can it can do a really good job if done the right way and it has to be done the right way um, so and we'll, again we'll talk about it because instead of to your point earlier my first thought was to actually put has anyone ever put lights in the soffit for the down lighting so that's a great application especially over garages where you have a big garage door if you have the proper soffit, 
think about downlight, downlight. And there's obviously ways, especially on this house, you got gutters, you can go up the gutter, you can do gutter mounts. Um, and, and maybe that's the next lighting 102, Josh, is we do a house that has second level dormers and peaks that you can't get from the ground, um, the, et cetera. So you guys know what I'm talking about, some of the homes we're talking about. So down lighting, as we're going through the installation here, I'm gonna show you guys, um, and some of you as we're doing it, like how we could actually down light this house as well, which can look really good. But it doesn't look good that I see around town when they go up into the second and third levels, because that's then you see the fix if you see the fixture it takes away from everything and there are a couple custom builders around town I don't know if you guys have seen it that are doing them up real high and like soffit lights everywhere but then you're like wow source source in your face everywhere so um, but we will talk a lot about down lighting today as we go throughout the day um, so as you guys can see those two on the other those are on the other side driveway which we'll go walk and look at once we get started Next, next thing, as I approach this design, I'm like, okay, here's, here's the design, here's what I would like to do. I put that usually into my, for my brain into groupings. Um, of course, we don't have a real big house, but let's say we had front, back, side. So I always try to keep it in zones. So you just wanna keep that in your, in your mind for your zones and as you're designing it. So to me, it's pretty simple, front landscape, front architecture here. So, and then if we had, let's just say we had back, backyard, palm trees, backyard down lights on pool deck. So you just want to keep that because that, that'll help your brain as we lay the transformer out and create runs. Everyone know when I say run, well, zones, okay, home runs, yep. So you want to keep that in your head because back in the day, it was really important for halogen, like you could only put <laughs> three fixtures on a run. My goodness, now you can put a lot, a lot, a lot without the voltage drop. So um, there's no need necessarily for big, um, you know, long dry runs and stuff anymore. Although we'll talk about that once we start the install. If you're ever uncertain, you can always run a dry run before you, you know, bury the cable and then find, oh wow. Because what do you always want to prepare for in the future three months, three years that this Mr. Phillips would do? Add more lights. There you go. Always want to think of adding more lights. They're going to add more lights or take away. So you always want to keep your zones and your runs um, and, and keep that in mind that they're going to add lights and never max it out. Because if you, again, just I know a lot of this is redundant, but if we run all the way around and we, he, he's like, oh yeah, I got a beautiful new tree out here. Oh, you can't, you know. But again, it's a lot different with LED now. But what if those zones were automated together, right? Because there's going to be to the point when we get to that next level where we talk to you guys about you can actually there are so you can automate zones separately. Sometimes they may not want you know all the lights on and, and just the, the front, just the back, you know, vice versa. So, um, so when you're when you're thinking about this design, you always want to think about transformer placement. Would we put the transformer right here? No. no. Have you seen it? Yeah. I mean, people do it all the time. It's crazy. You want a hidden source, and again, this house. Uh, this house creates a, uh, a challenge just because a lot of times you can put it in the garage by your irrigation stuff, right? But it's not really an option here because we poke out and so we're going to have to run all the way around and it, it, is, it is what it is unless they want to, you know, of course on a bigger, probably like if this was a huge, you might have to say to the homeowner, you got to get an outlet on the right side of the house or something. But so you always want to think about transformer placement and when you do your costing and how many runs you want to do that with. So, but, um, so with that said, we're gonna um, go ahead and start with the layout. Um, Joel's gonna walk you through like the steps of an install, if you will, uh, like where you wanna start. So first things first, fixture placement. So that's what we do first, fixture placement. And then, um, and Joel's gonna touch on the like n next three steps after that, and then we'll get started. A lot of you guys have been out, uh, I think at your other uh, facility, we've talked before, Trevor and I both together. So I don't worry about uh, the introductions and I remember cause it's not working. All right, now we got it. <clears throat> Kaz, right? We've met before, yeah. I kept looking at you, good to see you. Um, so as far as layouts and things of that nature, and I think you wanted me basically to talk about uh, installation. So uh, I like to start uh, 
by the first things first is you see you got a whole table full of stuff here so um, I like to break my crews into different groups right I want somebody to do a transformer right a couple of guys to go out and let's get that transformer installed find out where it's gonna go let's get it installed okay uh, I like to get a couple of guys to unbox these things and you guys have done enough installs you know the boxing and unboxing is a pain in the butt but if you get to a point where you're like Henry Ford was and you make a factory now you're getting efficient right so you break yourselves up into crews and you have certain jobs to do and I'd like to see you all know all those jobs but when you get out there um, a job like this is probably three or four guys don't need all of you to do a job like this in a day right you can do it I know you can so that's first things first uh, you need to know uh, your design where you're gonna put it I like to use flags you know let's find out where these lights go put those flags out and put a 60 degree on that flag or a 35 degree or a 15 degree so now your guys are coming over here um, after you got them all on box I like putting the stakes on first because when you put the stakes in the ground and then the fixture you'll twist that wire up and trust me, I've seen enough warranties in my day that I know exactly what's happening out there. And they say, hey, your light failed. And I say, hey, I know why. And I also, uh, the guys that are putting these together here, I like to snip the wires, right? Have them snipped early. Good, I like to see all the nodding heads. I think I've talked to you guys before, and maybe you already knew, but so have it ready then you got guys that are running them out there and they're just putting in you got a guy that's running wire right where's the wire going have one or two guys you got heavy spools you set them up you run the wires i like starting at the last of that home run uh, during the install and wiring the fixtures you've got the fixtures it's kind of in there a little bit right somebody already laid it out know that it's a 60 degree maybe for uh, you know one of these trees over here and so when you start doing the wiring the it's already stripped you make sure it's in the place you want it it's aimed right you start wiring it <clears throat> and you go from the end of the wire or the last fixture and I go back to my transformer right now I know exactly how much wire that I need right I don't cut that wire a lot of times and sometimes you'll have to and, and you go a little bit extra because even still prices have changed but the wire is going to be your cheapest thing here so don't worry about extra uh, wire or don't worry about an extra run we talked a little bit about voltage drops and having a lot of fixtures on it but again zoning is good so five or six fixtures per run depending on where they're located right because the wire is going to be your cheapest right and so you can go ahead and put more wire in instead of just keep adding fixtures adding fixtures adding fixtures to one run plus that's going to help with troubleshooting so hopefully uh one of these days you guys are going to be at a place where you're going to have one or two man crew that's going to be collecting maintenance money if you will and going out and fixing so now if you do it the same way all the time these guys know exactly what to do and how to do it so if they've got one or two fixtures out it might be because of cut wire somewhere someone came in and put an annual in right shovel in you know flowers are put in and they walk away right well now mrs smith's lights don't work those two over on that end so you know that zone one home run you can figure it out troubleshoot it fast and uh, get her taken care of so just a couple of quick little tips there um, trying to come up with some more things a uh, couple other things for you um, transformers I like to talk about transformers they're very important um, and if I had a transformer here to show you right now opened up I would ask you a simple question I, I think I might have asked you guys before how many sides are to a uh, to a transformer if you look at a transformer all right, that's a silly question. There's four sides, right? That's not what I'm looking for. There's actually two sides. And those two sides is primary power, or 110, we call it line voltage, right? There's one side coming in, it's 120, right? Or 110, however you want to say it. And then it steps that down into low voltage. So that's the secondary side. So you have a primary, 
is just like any plug that you work with in your home, and then you have a secondary, and that's the low voltage going out to the fixtures, okay? It's very important to understand that. So there's a plug in there, you guys have all seen, I'm sure. We put timers in there, we put um, our new Wi-Fi thing in there. That's still on the primary side, that's 110 voltage coming out of there. When you plug a um, photocell in, that's 110 voltage, right? But then underneath, when you're plug putting the wires in, those taps, the 12, 13, 14, 15 volt taps, that's your secondary side. Okay, make sense? Don't know if you all knew that, but it's important to understand what that is. So that transformer really is a step down transformer. Do you guys uh, have anything in your pocket that takes a step down transformer, you think? Pull out your phones, right? You guys are all plugging them in. You can plug it into USB, but you've got that little thing that you plug in at home and then plug into your phone to charge it. That's a step down transform, same thing, all right? So I just, I like to talk about that because it's important that you understand. Number one, you can work with one light and not electrocute yourself while it's still powered on. I don't suggest it. Go ahead and turn the transformer off. There's a little breaker there, you can turn it off. Or you can just unplug it, right? It's always safe, you know, always be safe. But you're talking about 12, 13, 14, 15 volts. If you touch both, both of those wires with, you know, both of your hands, you're not gonna fall over dead, all right? It'll feel a little funny, but you won't fall over dead. So, <clears throat> that's good. What else am I supposed to be talking about here, Trevor? I think that's, that's good. I mean, it's one Did you guys have any questions about that kind of stuff? Another thing uh, I've told you before, when you're wiring your, um, the transformer and all of your lights, I like to think about polarity. When we talk about polarity, a lot of times it's line voltage, and people will argue with me in the uh, LED world that it does not matter. And that's true, but what does matter is how you do things every time. So on your wire, you will have writing on one side and no uh, writing on the other, or it'll be uh, smooth on one side, and they're all this way, or they'll be ribbed on one side. I like just looking for the wiring, all right? So if there's writing on there, and if you got black, um, wire, then it'll be white. I think the brown wire is a little harder to see. It's, it's black, it's a little harder to find. But you also have that on the wiring for the fixtures. Match them up. And then pick, and I always use the, the writing on the wire goes into my commons, okay? And then the one that doesn't have the writing goes into the tap. Okay, and if you do that at every job you have, then troubleshooting all that, you will, you'll never have a problem. It'll make life a lot easier for you. So again, like Henry Ford did, make it a factory, make yourself efficient, because the faster the jobs are done, the better for everybody, including yourself. Hopefully you get home a little earlier, right? That's always important. So let me uh, open this up for any questions. Is there a standardized height that the transformers have to go in for the warranty? Not for the warranty, but uh, UL says 12 inches above grade, all right? So you wanna be between that 12, 18 inches above grade, depending on where you're at. If you're closer to uh, St. Augustine where it floods all the time, you know, go ahead and bring her up a little bit, all right? Um, again, you want to find a spot if you can, because one thing that I've found, and not only in this state, but in many states, and I've worked at many states, um, electricians, when they build homes, and the builders design homes, they don't put a lot of outlets on houses. Never understood that, but that's true, all right? Um, so find an outlet that you can put it, and Trevor even mentioned earlier, you know, here's one here. I mean, my God, what are you gonna plug into there other than a microphone for me to talk, you know? <laughs> it's just right there at the door, it just doesn't make sense. But there it is, uh, so you'll find a lot of that. Um, something did come to me a minute ago, and because I'm old, I forgot, but it'll come back to me. Uh, that's uh, important to talk about. Any other questions? Did I answer your question? Great, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. So this has got, what, 18 lights? We're, we're going to do three runs? 17.
Yeah, pretty close. It really depends on the layout, and I haven't taken a look at it, but that's kind of um, would be a, a good assumption. Okay. Um, I like to, you know, look at layouts and draw a circle, like in this corner and that corner, and so on and so forth, too to make my first layout. So. Is your longest run, is that the 15 volt? In most cases, that's exactly right. And then you, the middle one would be 13 or 14, and then the closest one would be 12? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a great way to, to look at it. And of course, depending on the job and all that, it might change. But yes, I would say absolutely yes to that. Yes, sir. Are we doing this Earthworks way, or we're going to do it your, you all's way? How you all do well, it. I'm going to have a blind eye, so you do whatever way you want to do it. <laughs> we talk about like closed loop, but we don't do closed loop type thing. We just kind of lay stuff out and kind of go. I don't know, I'm just asking like, are we, like how we're going to do it. So. Well, hopefully uh, we'll have a little input and we'll see how you guys are doing it and we'll e uh, either say yes, you're doing it right, or no, let you do it like this, you know. Um, to me, uh, having more runs is better than having everything hooked to one run. You know, um, it might sound like it's uh, easier, it might sound like it's cheaper for the homeowner, but it's really not. It's better to do it, um, and we've got to see, because we've got that transformer in the back, and I haven't even seen the location yet, but we've got long runs already, you know, it sounds like. And, not that long of runs. I mean, I've seen two, three, four hundred feet runs, right? Um, and I don't think we're getting anywhere near that here. But um, to me, if I can put four runs in, or you know, five runs in, then I'll do it, um, just for troubleshooting that sort of stuff. Joel, when you're saying yes, sir. a loop, you don't mean a loop coming from the transformer to the last light and then back to it. No, no, no. So our, the ones no. we do, we run out to that last light. They're completing a loop. Electric, electrically, right? Right. You got the common and the vault. And, and was that your... a loop within that same strand that goes out. Was that your question? It was about a loop? Yeah, I, I think we do it the same way he's talking about. Right. It is one wire, but it create the current creates one loop in that same <clears throat> Right. So, um, so there's four uh, ways of running lights, okay? So you have daisy chain, which is what commonly everybody uses right now, especially with LED. So a daisy chain is your wire goes out and you have, let's say, four lights on that, all right? It's not coming back again. It's just those two wires going out, right? You got a common and a 12 volt and it goes straight out. Let's say it comes around here and then we do all these lights there. That's called a daisy chain. Now it's cut at every place, but then reconnected with the, wire, with the lights, okay? Um, so then you have a loop method, right? The loop method is starts at the transformer, goes out, comes all the way back and comes back to that transformer again and, and gets connected again. And we used to use that during the halogens, incandescents and all that because that gave like a constant current, especially if you had a lot of lights and you had to go a long run. So that way there wasn't a lot of voltage drop. So that would be a loop method, right? And then there's a T method. If you do have a 200, 300 um, feet run, you run a line all the way out there. And then in the middle, you got another line going like that. That's called a T, right? And it doesn't have to be right in the middle or anything. It can actually go to the end. It's still a T. But, and then you can put maybe four fixtures on that. Um, and if you do it in the middle, then I'm, get, I'm getting <clears throat> good voltage to each one of those fixtures because I might be on the 15 volt tap, but by the time I get all the way out there, I'm only at about 10.3 volts, right? So I've a lot of drop because it's so much distance. It's called resistance within the cable, all right? So now I can run those four lights off of that because now I'm going to lose a little bit here and then lose a little bit here, but I balanced it out and I actually have 10.2 at the center and that's all I need. What I need for all of my fixtures in Kitchler is between 9 volts and 15 volts. So when you run your um, home run and you put, let's say you put eight fixtures on there, and that last fixture, you should use a multimeter and have it turned on and you should test that. Where's my voltage? If I'm at 7.2, I did something wrong, 
I got too many lights on there. And if I'm at 7.2 of my last, then I'm at about 7.6 at the one before that. And then I'm at 8.2, and then I'm at, you know, just keeps on going, right? So, <clears throat> so you wanna make sure you have nine or better volts per each fixture throughout the runs. Um, and then where, what's my other uh, run? Oh, would be a hub. So the fourth one is a hub uh, scheme. And that brings, um, you have a run to a central place and then with 25 foot leads, you can put five fixtures on that. And it all gives them all the same voltage from that spot. So the key is whatever your run is, you want, if you're on a 15 volt or 12 volt tap, whatever, you want the maximum voltage at the start where you start putting in all your other lights, okay? Does that make sense? And did I say loop before or? I did, okay, sorry. And, what, and maybe when I say loop, I, I, I just put a circle around them on a piece of paper is really what I meant. And then, then my home run goes to that, and then you can figure out how to wire those to them. So I apologize for saying loop, but a oh, great question though. Anything else? Anybody else? I was going to touch on a couple more things and then there you go. get going. Thanks. Like everything we're using here is 3000K Kelvin. Um, as you guys know, uh, with these fixtures, they offer 2700, 3000, and then even more. Um, I like to stay consistent on a house like this. It's got color. If it were, I don't really use a lot of 2700. Um, and that's you know, something we can talk about when we do look at uh, the designs and pictures. But um, to me, you just want to be consistent. And so we're going to use 3000 Kelvin on the landscape and on the house itself. And it makes a lot of sense because it's green, right? So we just want to make sure that there's consistency in the color and that there's no hot spots. So everything that we're going to, even the core drills will be the same color temperature as the, as the accent lights. And as you guys can see, I have two accent lights on each of these trees. And the reason I think, to me, when I approach a design, it's always much better to have two smaller fixtures to get a, you know complete coverage than one bigger one um, shining at it, which you see a lot. The the typical um, un, you know educated approach is just to put one big flood on that Sago and pull it back. The better look is two. So anytime you can do that for a customer, and you know, that's, let them take that off. You know, design it how you would approach it, as if you, if it were your home, and you wanted to look the best way possible. All right, and that's the best way possible is to actually do two, two on each. Now, some of these bigger palms, as you guys know, I, I'd much rather have three, like some of your big medjool palms and stuff. I'd much rather have three smaller ones than two bigger ones. They actually will cover it better. So, so more light, not more bright lumens, but actual more fixtures sometimes can be better. Yeah, if that makes sense. On the paper, you have the lights going front and back. Is there a reason why you wouldn't do them on the sides? You know, that's that is a great question, especially on a corner house, <laughs> because we have it. You know, per, two perspectives. Um, I guess there's not really a right. You could do either. All right, you really could, but I just, the way that this house set up to me, I did it at six and 12 instead of three and nine. Um, but I mean, there's not really a right answer to that in my opinion. You could really do it either way, but I can turn that shield backwards on this one if it's gonna be, in, if it is gonna, the source is gonna be in someone's face. Well, if you said they're using that front walkway. Yeah. They'll be coming and looking out against it where you'll see the light against it walking up. Yeah. And then coming down the street against it also. Yeah. Versus it on the side to side. Yeah. I just took, I think at the end of the day with something like that, again, this is a, this house is more of a, you know, challenge than a lot just because it is on the corner and it's a kind of a squatty area. But you're right. I mean, I, that's kind of my brain when I was looking at it. I was like, well, they got the walkway there. I just, you know, the homeowner says he's constantly using that and coming out to walk this. So it just made sense to me, okay. six and 12. But uh, that's not, like I said, there's not really, you could have kind of went either way on those okay. for sure. Yeah. So, but that's a great question. And really a lot of times it, you know, lighting is an art um, and you really, the homeowner's, you know, I've seen thousands and thousands, and you guys have seen a lot too, but you really just, it's hard sometimes for that customer to envision 
really what they're getting. And that's why picture portfolios are huge. So to be able to show that because really in lighting and when you're designing and you're approaching the customer, you're selling the sizzle, not the steak, no offense, Joel. But you're not, I, you know, never really, and I told Jason this and Josh this, I never really showed fixtures. They just knew from my company that I was going to use quality fixtures. Does that make sense? I was showing, because it is so hard for so many people to envision what that's going to look like, that pictures will, will uh, paint the picture. So that's why we're using those lights where we are there. So I think at this point we should probably get started, go look. at the Kelvin and the VLO, like switching through. Uh, yes. Yep. Um, so everyone, you guys use are obviously top high quality product. Um, and these are VLO, variable lumen outputs. And so they, they have the opportunity, what we're going to be able to do with these. I don't, again, I don't know what you guys know or don't know. And Joel's going to know, huh? The yeah, the magnet. So you can change the, 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 the output and the lumens of that. Uh, the Kelvin is, is going to stay the same. Kelvin is the color temperature, right? Lumens is the actual amount of light that it's putting out. Both are very important. And in putting those together, you create an efficacy of, of, a, of a, um, a combination, if you will, that will make, can make each application look different. And again, help you guys separate yourself apart from anyone else out there. And this fixture allows you to do that. And it's a really good uh, combination. Kelvin has to do with color, right? Kelvin yeah. is color. Yeah, so 3,000 3, is um, a soft white, if you will, 2,700. As you go lower um, and lower and lower, you'll get down to like like 2,700 is a warmer color. And like you can go as, you know, as low as you want, really. It starts to turn yellow and orange, et cetera. Yeah, so your 2,700 is going to be um, considerable or considered close to the old um, bulbs that your mothers and grandmothers could, used to yeah. have, right? That's going to be what we used to put in our house all the time. And that's going to be considered a warm color. And the 3000 will be considered a cool. And they're even working on, I'm sorry, they're, they're working on two where they actually, the it's hard for the eye to tell more than 50 Kelvin difference, but there is a bulb that's 3250 uh, tech I used to use on a different, if I wanted a little bit more modern approach. And then of course, 4,000, you can go to 4,000 K and you will get that. And when you do a lot of your down lights or even big oak trees, I like to do on some of those. And then they even have a 5,000. And when you go up that, to answer your question, once you go up into that level, it turns from white to bluish color. Once you get up into the five, uh, that 5,000, 6,000. The number, the more yellow the light appears. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Warm, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, for designing purposes, earth tones, I like the 2700s. Right. So you've got a darker earth tone home. A red. And I would go, or a red, yeah, darker red. Um, 2700 is the way I design. Um, here in Florida, mostly it's lighter uh, colored stuff. So you're going to use 3000, probably 90 so that, plus percent. Is that because the red like absorbs the light more? Uh, it, it's more uh, pleasing um, just to the wow. eye what we're uh, used to and what we like. Uh, might have a little bit to do with uh, absorbing in the darker, um, but you know, uh, you don't want a white house to look yellowy right. because they painted it white, number one, right? Gotcha. Um, but the earth tones are going to show off a little bit better with that more of a warmer color, okay. um, give you a, a, you know more shadowing, things of that nature to look uh, uh, a little closer to what uh, the homeowner or builder wanted it to look like. Um, but you start getting into the lighters, you got the greens and the whites and stuff like that. You definitely want to go with 3000 Kelvin. Um, yep. So, because if you got a white house and you put a, a yellowy light on it, someone's not going to be real happy. Yeah, that's and that's how it used to be when we first started. They All the halogen were those yeah, colors. But, um, yeah, I, I think really it's just, it, it, I, I don't know the exact scientific reason, but it's just more pleasing to the eye. On, and for me, it's just red and brown, like a darker brown. I don't really use a lot of 2700 unless it is that browner or red okay. color. So for example, that, that brick. Ah, yep, exactly. That for 
That's exactly right. Yep. You could definitely use that. Now you can use a 3000 as well there. You know, yeah. The homeowner in most cases doesn't know the difference. Once you're done yeah. with the job, they don't know the difference. And I always say most of my training classes, you know, the homeowner uh, and most people don't know much about lights. You guys are learning a lot more than most people will ever know Already about know, lights. Yeah. So they go over to that switch and the lights turn on. That's what they know. That's all they know. Now they're learning a little bit because they're going to Home Depot and now they're confused. What bulb do I put in? Or what fan do I buy? Or what light fixture for my kitchen do I get? I get this from my neighbors all the time. And now you can buy them where they've got 2,700, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, 500 on a switch in a fixture that goes in somebody's kitchen. And, you know, I put it on 2,700 and a day later they come, well, it looks too orangey in there, you know. So I'll put it on 3,000. Oh, I love it. You know, now I'm a hero, you know. So I do it on purpose just so they call me back and I can say, hey, I'm a hero, you know. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> You know, so uh, so now they're learning a little bit more, and if you've gone to a Home Depot or Lowe's or any store like that, retail store, you know, you pull a, a bulb down now, all kinds of information on there about what it is, 2700 and they got a little color chart and blah, 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 all that stuff. So um, people are learning a little bit more, and that all came from, first came from the compact fluorescence. You guys, I remember the ice cream cone kind of looking things, right? It had mercury in them and all that. Not supposed to use them. And then we got into the LEDs, so people are getting to know a little bit more. But um, yeah, you just like anything you guys do, you have educated customers, and some just like, hey, do what you do, right? So um, if if you, I would, I always try not to get too detailed and create um, paralysis yeah, with the homeowner. The but again, that's where I go back to just selling that sizzle and uh, you know pictures and um, of of the look and the dream of what they what they're tailored to their personality and what they're looking for. That's so. a little question about uh, where we put uh, our fixtures, you know, on the lights. You know, we've got this and all that, and Trevor answered it perfectly. But also remember the cowls, right? The cowl is good. Mm -hmm. you, you can turn that three, 360 degrees, right? Or 180, either way, however you want to look at it. Use them so if you do feel like, or the homeowner feels like <coughs> when they come out that front door, they can get that little light in their eye use that cowl so as you're doing the install keep that in mind you can just twist that just a little bit and he'll never see that yeah we'll talk with you know here um whether it's you know for the streets because that's important too i don't know how many times you drove into an hoa or a community that's got these big you know 500 watt lights on their sign and right. you, you know as you're getting close to it you see it you know you're driving at midnight or whatever or, you know or dark and you see it, and it's like, oh, man, that's obtrusive. That's, you know, it's aggravating, yeah. and it drives me nuts. As you get more and more into lights, you, you'll you be looking up at Home Depot and say, oh, right. yeah, those are 5,000 Kelvin, and oh, that's this and that's that. I've been doing it for almost 30 years now. It still drives me crazy, but I do it everywhere I go. <laughs> and uh, I can't go over to Mark's house without adjusting a fixture, or Doug's house, or, yeah. or Jason's, or anybody's house without touching that fixture and adjusting it a little bit. And somebody's, oh, that looks a lot better. You know, it's just, it's who I am and it's what we do. So, um, and that's where, um, when I say shield, that's, he says cow. Uh, yeah. That's what Kitchler calls them for whatever reason. So that's what I was talking about shields. That's what, you know, extending them or moving them or twisting them. Just a quarter inch roll of a shield can change the complete application of that fixture from the homeowner's perspective. 